Welcome to Back to Basics. I am Gerardo Estaba, and today we're going to talk about implementing a strong identity foundation for your internal users. If we ever build a house, we don't want it to crumble down after a couple of years for the lack of a strong foundation. The same applies to our cloud applications. We might be starting small, but over time it is likely we're going to end up with more of those applications, we're going to grow them, we're going to add features. So it's likely we end up with a couple of workloads running across a couple of AWS accounts. So it makes sense to start with a strong foundation. Now, one of the most important foundations for building in the cloud is identity. So today we're going to talk about four of the most important principles of identity in the cloud, but I'm going to make it easy for you. And we're going to give you a couple of tips so that you can get started and implement those very easily. So let's do it. Let's say we want to give AWS access to our colleagues. I can create an AWS IAM user with long-term credentials, but this isn't always great because creating another set of credentials adds complexity to that user and that in turn makes it harder to secure. The best thing we can do is delegating authentication to a centralized identity provider. This is also called federation. This way we can manage all of our colleagues' identities in one place. And there are many popular identity providers such as Okta, Ping, Active Directory, or even the built-in identity provider that's available on AWS single sign-on. By using a single identity provider, we can manage access to multiple applications and services from a single place because we can create, manage, and revoke access in that one location. For example, if someone leaves our organization, we can revoke access to all of our applications and services, including AWS, from one location. This also reduces the need for multiple credentials for that particular user, so users will love that. Okay, so the first tip is avoid creating AWS IAM users and instead rely on a centralized identity provider for federated access to AWS. Another anti-pattern is using long-term static credentials. And this is because, let's face it, people make mistakes. I have been guilty of publishing access keys to GitHub despite telling my customers not to do it. So the best way to never lose an access key is to never have an access key in the first place. So the tip here is we should eliminate the reliance on long-term static access credentials. And the good news is that we can enforce for this for our colleagues very easily and seamlessly with the help of AWS single sign-on. AWS SSO centrally manages access to business applications in one location. When federating access into AWS accounts, AWS SSO acquires temporary credentials and then refreshes them on behalf of the users when they're using the AWS console or the latest versions of the AWS CLI. So not only is this approach secure, but it also provides a great experience to our colleagues. So now that we have our centralized identity provider and we're enforcing the use of temporary credentials by federating access into AWS, it is time we secure our root user. The root user is the default one that we get when we first create an AWS account from scratch. This user has complete access to all AWS services and resources in the account. And given how much power this root user has, the best thing we can do is enable multi-factor authentication for it, configure strong credentials for it, and avoid using it all together or as much as possible. While some actions require the use of the root user, these are the exception, and we should be using our identities from the identity provider for all our general activities on AWS. Finally, we should grant least privilege access. For our colleagues, it means giving them the minimum permissions they need to perform their job. This prevents unintended access. So how do we do this? In our IAM policies, instead of using wildcards, we should scoping down our policies and being as specific as possible. We can specify the service actions, the resources, and the conditions that must be true for AWS to allow access. Now, managing IAM policies at scale across multiple accounts can become challenging. But guess what? AWS single sign-on also makes life simple here. SSO configures and maintains all the necessary IAM policies in our accounts automatically. This way, you can focus on assigning user permissions based on common job functions, and assign these permissions to users or groups in the specific accounts where they are needed. If you want to learn more, there are a lot of links for diving deep in the description below. See you next time.